I just want to thank you so much on behalf of Pat and Sean and Kelly and the entire family. It means so very much that you are here with us. As we gather, I want to acknowledge the many emotions that you might be feeling right now. You might be feeling sad, grieving, maybe even a sense of relief that Tim and Bill are suffering. And all those emotions are 100% okay. It's okay to be feeling what you're feeling right now. And alongside our sadness, I hope and plan that we're going to find many moments to celebrate in life. Pat asked that this would not be a time of only sadness, but of utter celebration for the life that Tim led. And that's what we're going to do together this morning. It's about remembering the joy that he brought to our lives, the impact that he made, the love that he shared. So let us reflect on these memories. Let us reflect on the legacy that Tim leaves behind. And in a little while, we're going to um, set alongside space for each of you to share as well any memories that you might have of Tim. So as you went to see the pamphlet, Tim wanted to share a poem. The poem is, I am free, to assure you that he is at peace and that he is free. And I want to read it on um, the past time. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path that God leads for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it off. I could not stay in the beginning to laugh, to love, to work, or play. Task left undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the close of day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. Friendship share, a laugh, a kiss. Ah, yes, these things too I will miss. Do not burn it with times of sorrow. I wish for you in the sunshine of tomorrow. My life has been full, I savor much. Good friends, good times, my loved ones touch. If my time seems all too brief, don't lengthen it now with time too brief. Lift up your heart. Rejoice with me. God wanted me now. He has set me free. Tim. I remember meeting Tim at the hospital where I worked at the, at the chaplain. So that's that's before. But, but what I want to show right now is that I remember sitting with him in his living room not too long ago. And I asked him, Tim, what's been on your mind lately? And he looked at me with that thoughtful expression of his, and he said, Matt, every day I try to do three things. I want to find something that makes me think, something that makes me laugh, and something that makes me cry. In those words, they stayed with me. It's a reminder of how, lived, uh, how Tim lived his life with depth, joy, and a willingness to embrace every emotion. And as Pat's family shared, that he had a lot of emotions. I first met Tim, as I mentioned, in my role as a chaplain. I was called by the nurse practitioner to come meet Tim and Pat and offer some emotional support because of all the grief, all the sadness that they've been carrying, and with um, Tim's health condition too. So when I introduced Tim to myself, um, Tim and Pat arranged some time that Tim and I could spend alone to have conversations. And in that, he shared with me his deepest hopes for his end of life. He wanted to be at peace, and he was at peace with what they had. His greatest wish was for a quick and gentle passing, to spare a path from more suffering than necessary. With quiet certainty, Tim said to me, I'm ready to go home. And what I mean by that is I'm not ready to go home to my house. I'm ready to go home. It was clear to me that Tim had come to a place of acceptance. Facing his journey with a blend of courage and grace that left a lasting impression on me. We continue to talk about his life, his childhood, his service in the military, and the things that he found most meaningful, which with each of you. From that day forward, I knew that my connection and Tim's connection with me was something special. Over time, we grew closer, and Tim seemed to genuinely enjoy our time together. And, and I looked forward to each of our conversations. There was a, a moment that captured that sense of Tim's human and spirit so well. Uh, we were in the hospital, like he was about to have some ice cream, and he needed a 
get to the light turning um, to make sure that he was okay. And I did that just like two or three times until I then explained, Give me like a man, I'm not a baby. <laughs> And we laughed, and I, I realized that Tim, Tim didn't want to be a baby, he didn't want to be um, held with kid gloves. He wanted, he wanted me, he wanted everybody to treat him for who he was as a person. And he wanted the respect that goes with it. And respect is not given time, it's a life dream, I've learned. <laughs> Tim's generosity wasn't just reserved for a few months. It was at the core of who he was. He once told me a story from his days as a manager when his company offered him a bonus. Tim didn't like that idea. He thought about the people that worked for him. He didn't want that bonus. He didn't want to keep it for himself. And so he insisted that the money be distributed to his team. He saw his colleagues not just as employees, but as family. And he valued their well-being even more than his own. That story alone paints a picture of the sense that I know in my six or seven months that I got to know. A man who put others first, who lifted people up, and wanted to make sure that everybody that he saw as his knew that they mattered. As our connection deepened, Tim and Patty asked if I could continue to visit him outside the hospital, which in my time as a hospital chaplain, I, I never really follow somebody outside of the hospital. And yet Tim asked me if I could and I was very glad and said yes, yeah, I would keep seeing him. One day when I went to his house, Tim looked at me and I knew that there was seriousness, seriousness in his eyes and it made me pause. And he asked if he could ask me something important. He wondered if I would be able to do this funeral for him. I was honored that he asked to be here today, and over the next part of that conversation, Tim shared with me the word that he would want you guys to know today. His wishes for it at this moment, right now, it, it wasn't about himself. He, he doesn't want to think, he doesn't want you to think about the sadness of him no longer being here. He wanted you to be okay. And he wanted him to be recovered with the same thoughtfulness and care that he put into everything that he did. You want to know how much he loved music? We're going to listen to a few of his songs um, today. We listened to one earlier. How deeply he cherished his family. How proud he was of the service that he spent for our country and the service that he spent thinking about everybody that he called his. He was focused on others. He gave himself fully, and his legacy lives on in laughter, the tears, and the memories that he shared with each one of you. So at this time, I'm going to invite um, some time of reflection. Pat's going to share um, first, and then we'll open it up to the shot and Kelly and anybody else who would like to share. And in this time, this could be kind of a verbal bouquet of short talks. These are flowers of words and thoughts that you would like to share about them, what he meant to you, and with his family. So Pat, would you like to come up and share? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to thank everyone for coming. Um, and afterwards, I hope that Many of you can join us back at the house. We're going to have a celebration of life there for him. Um, Matt has said a lot already. Jim was born on Family Farm in Marion Center, Pennsylvania. He lived his first 18 years there. And then he moved to Florida. And it's how we met. Um, he was from Indiana County. I was from here. We meet in Idaho, of all places. <laughs> he happened to be in the military and was traveling across with his three roommates um, on Interstate 70. I was on Interstate 80. Ended up in the same apartment complex. 
and one day out of the pool, um, that's where we met, and 46 years later, we're still we're together. Um, we raised our kids in different places, Pennsylvania, Virginia, um, New York, and then back to Pennsylvania again. Um, as far as him being um, with the service, sometimes I think he would be gone more of those first four years of our life out to sea. That's the birth of our son by four days because they extended his tour. Um, and I said, we're not having a second one until you're done. Um, I said, because he never, even other than, I think by one picture, which I swear to God he lost somewhere on that ship, um, saw even a pregnant picture of me. So, um, but anyhow, uh, with Sean and Kelly, we kind of split our time between the two. We took, he took Sean under his wing, they went golfing, they went bowling, and had their talks in time, and Kelly and I went when she got on that first horse, um, we did gymnastics for a little bit, but the horses went out. <laughs> and she still loves them to this day. On weekends, <coughs> you know, he loved to have a fire like him on the patio. And I have seen how many people it would draw, you know. The young ones here that were our neighbors at the time as triplets and newborns would come up spend time, Tim would help them to build a fire. I can remember one time as they were playing ball in the backyard, Aaron Giddy caused him to get a bloody nose. Aaron disappeared real fast. <laughs> but we, uh, we did get pictures later of Aaron's artwork of Tim with his broken glasses and bloody nose. <laughs> uh, but the boys are now 12, you know. Um, he enjoyed Trevor, the oldest one. Um, you saw in the video picture, they played chess as Trevor grew, you know, and just learned, loved to share time with the neighbors and those conversations. His friends, Francisco, you were a lovely family. I can tell you, I did like the recall nights, okay? <laughs> um, those were long, but he earned their respect um, and he was proud of the job that he did there. Um, and he loved the way that afterwards, and when he retired, he still took the time to come and see him at Mass. And as Dave would say, he still wants to know, I wonder how Tim would fix that. <laughs> and, and so I'm sure they're kind of saying that still. Um, and as those of you who know, his illness did take a toll on him. Last year was the hardest, and kind of required my time 24 7. Thankfully, I had a great place of employment that allowed me to come and go and be with him as I needed to be with him. And um, for that, I say thank you to everybody. Um, Tim and I both appreciate everything that you've done for us, and hopefully we'll continue to do for us. Thank you all. Successful kids for open management. We learned from him. We saw what he 
did, how he interacted with people, how he collected people. And everybody in this room is one of those people that he collected. And I've taken that to heart. I do that with my own teams. Share your personal life with the people you work with. They are your second family. Take those times. We spend almost as much time at work as we do with our actions. So take those time. Share of yourself. Give of yourself to those people around you. And they'll carry your life with you. So that's the biggest message I want from him to pass to all of you. Is just grow your commitment. Pay attention to the people around you. They need your help. They need your time. Get it to them. As we all go here. Thank you all for coming.
be able to look, look through it and get to watch all these. And he was just giving her some insight into maybe what she'd be heading into. <laughs> One of the things that struck me was he said, we didn't have women in the military, or in the Navy back then. He said, we protected our women. And I could tell that about him very thoughtful that way. And uh, it was just fun to look through and, and, and gain some things that he was imparting to my daughter. So he, uh, someone he didn't even know, you know, but because we were there to visit and uh, see some wise and funny, witty things to say and uh, encourage her on her way. So thanks, Pat. Cisco family, um, and we were <coughs> very much so. And technically, I was Tim's boss, and I say technically because Tim didn't need a boss. <laughs> he required <laughs> zero supervision, uh, very dedicated, passionate about his job. Uh, he loved his company, he loved his, his team that he always took care of, and Tim was probably the easiest. Uh, the easiest employee that I that I ever had to manage. Um, and just wanted to let Pat and the family know how Cisco felt about him. He was, as I said, extremely dedicated, very conscientious about his work, cared a lot about all the people that he worked with. And uh, we all are going to miss him very much. Thank you for sharing those stories. I'm sure there are so many more to the grateful now than the past and family later. I'm going to keep sure some more members of the family. At this time, we're getting on looking for a song that has to be incorporated into the service. <coughs> but the Beyonce is called I Was Here. And it encapsulates um, a little bit of Tim's life and a message that Pat and Tim would like to share with you all.
journey that each of us must take. A moment when the light of a life transformed is the glow of memories that live on within us. Though we often think of death as an end, it is also a doorway to something beyond what we know. A threshold that leads to a place of peace, release, and freedom from suffering. It's natural to feel the sting of loss and the ache of missing someone so dear. But we can also find comfort in the belief that love doesn't end. It changes, it grows, and it remains part of us. As we reflect on Finn's life, we can find inspiration in the song from Beyonce. Like the song says, Tim did his best, and he brought someone some happiness. Each of the groups here. He loved his work in the hearts of those who knew him, making sure that his life would mean something when he's gone. Tim lived with a purpose. And he made a difference that will be remembered in the lives he touched and the love he shared. So, in this moment, we hold on to the truth that the bonds we shared with him do not fade with his passing. His laughter, his steadiness, his presence in our lives have left an indelible mark on our hearts, much like a legacy that can all live him. And while we say goodbye to his physical presence, we care for his spirit and every memory, every story, and every lesson he shared with us. Let us find solace in knowing that Tim's journey now continues in a place where there's no more pain, only peace. A place where he's truly free. His impact remains a testament to a life well lived, reminding us all that the song so beautifully says, I was here, I lived, I loved. As we get to the, the last part of the service, the closing, the closing, I would like to share a passage that is well known to many people that is supposed to provide and is offered to provide peace at this time from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff take comfort me, and you prepare a table before me. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So, Tim, as we say our goodbyes today, I want to offer you one last word of gratitude for everything that you taught us and that you taught me. Thank you for the moments that you make us think deeply. Thank you for the times that you filled us with laughter. And most of all, thank you, Tim, for the moments that you moved us to tears. Your spirit lives on in the lessons you gave us, so we will carry them with us always. Thank you so much. And as Pat said, um, we hope that you'll be able to join the family at their house in full day. Thank you for being here, truly.